let's have a discussion on single end bonding of high voltage cable. Suppose this is a cable. This portion is the conductor of the cable. The conductor of the cable is covered with XLPE insulation as per the voltage level of the cable. And that XLPE insulation is covered with a metallic sheath. This metallic sheath serves two main purposes. The first one is it protects the cable from external electrical influences. Actually, the cable, where it is buried or where it is placed, the surrounding there will be other cables of same circuit or different circuits. There may be other cables of the same circuit or different circuits. And due to the influence of current through the different circuits or different phases of the same circuits, there may be electrical interference in the conductor of the cable. If this metallic sheath is properly earthed, then this will behave as an electrical shield over the conductor. Another purpose of this metallic sheath is that if any fault, such as an earth fault or a short circuit fault, occurs in the conductor of the cable or the cable, it will get a path and a low resistive path to the earth if the sheath is properly earthed. Now the question is, where actually the sheath is earthed? The sheath is generally earthed at extreme end of the sheath. It may also be earthed at this end. If we also earth the sheath at another end, then there will be a circulating path created through the sheath and the earth. Due to this circulating path, there will be an induced circulating current flowing through the sheath continuously, which creates unnecessary heat loss in the sheath, and this can make derating of the cable. In the fault condition, this circulating current will be huge. So in general, to avoid the circulating current, we generally avoid earthing of the sheath at two ends. Instead, we earth the sheath at one end. We provide earth at this end. And at this end of the sheath, we keep it open. And if we keep it open, the induced current will not get any close path to circulate. So no induced current will flow. And therefore, there will be no heat loss. As a result, the amplicity or current carrying capacity of the cable will not be reduced or the cable is not being derated. But as we keep open the one end of the sheath, there will be a voltage appearing at the open end of the sheath. And that voltage is induced voltage due to the current in the conductor. And that voltage will be proportional to the length of the cable sheath. If the cable sheath is smaller in size, means the length of the cable is very small, then the voltage that appears at the open end of the sheath will not be very big. But if this cable is long in length, that voltage may be a significant voltage. During faulty conditions, this voltage may appear much above the touch and step voltages, or it may deteriorate or damage the XLPE insulation of the cable. So there should be some arrangement so that that voltage hike can be avoided. And because of that, we provide at that open end a SVL, which means a sheath voltage limiter. Actually, we use a link box without sheath voltage limiter at the far end and a link box with sheath voltage limiter at the open end. That sheath voltage limiter is nothing but a surge arrestor of a low voltage rating. During faulty conditions, the voltage hike in the cable will be arrested by this surge arrestor. This voltage surge will be arrested or discharged to the earth by this surge arrestor. So one end of the cable is directly connected to the earth through a link box without SVL and the other end is connected to the earth through SVL. Why these link boxes are used in both cases? These link boxes are nothing but the arrangement of connecting and reconnecting the earth links.